Chapter 23 It was almost ten, when Jared stepped off his skiff at the dock in front of the small country store Ashley's parents owned. What can I help you with? An older man asked as he approached. Jared hadn't seen him before. He looked a little like Ashley. Jared realized this was possibly her father. I need to pick some things up inside. Will this be in the way if I leave it there for a few minutes? He'd deliberately pulled in as far away from the gas pumps as he could get. It should be fine. The older man looked down at the paper sack Jared carried. Is that trash? I can take care of it for you. No, actually, it's for Ashley. The other man's eyes narrowed. He looked Jared up and down a moment. You're the reason she's distracted and too busy for her family. Jared didn't know what to say, but he knew better than to lie. It would seem so, sir. Sir, the other man chuckled. I like that. How long do you plan on being here? Is my daughter a vacation distraction? You'll leave in a week, moving on with your life while leaving her heartbroken in your wake? No, sir. I'm here for the summer, at least that's my plan. I may go back before the end of the summer, but I have no intention of breaking Ashley's heart or forgetting about her. That's good to hear, but I'll reserve judgment for now. He turned to help a boat just easing up to the dock, closer to the gas pumps. Jared used the opportunity to get away and go inside. Hopefully, Ashley was alone, or at least didn't have another parent or family member with her, and he could deliver the breakfast he'd brought her without another confrontation. Inside the small store, he found a couple of other shoppers, but Ashley appeared to be the only one working. Moving up beside the counter where the register sat, he set the paper bag on the counter. At least I didn't meet your dad the way you met mom. He couldn't help but smile at the way her eyes went wide and her face turned pink. Oh no. What did he do? Ashley shook her head. Just questioned me a little, nothing bad. He was here when I arrived. I was so flustered because I was caught getting in late that I forgot to warn you. I'm sorry. Jared gave a low laugh. You have nothing to be sorry for. He was nothing compared to my mother. Seriously. He asked about my intentions. It was a little awkward because I wasn't expecting it, but it's fine. Like you said last night about mom, it's because he cares. She shot him an unhappy look. I guess. What did you bring me? She opened the bag and peeked inside. I took a chance and made you a steak and egg burrito. Anne? Sounds amazing. She pulled the foil-wrapped burrito out of the bag, set it beside the register, and stretched across the counter until her face was right in front of his. Thank you. Jared wasn't prepared for the kiss she gave him. A light kiss or quick peck would have fit that bill, but she didn't hold back. He blinked twice when she finally pulled back, not sure what to say. I've never had anyone other than my parents care enough to bring me food. He gave her a lopsided smile. It wasn't a big deal. Besides, I was the reason you missed breakfast to begin with. Still. You stopped what you were doing, not only to bring it to me, but to cook for me. She kissed his cheek and he felt his face heat. I'll call when I get off at about one and see what you're up to. Sounds good. He headed for the door then turned back. I noticed you don't always keep someone out at the docks, sometimes there's someone there, sometimes not. Ashley laughed, a light tinkling laugh that made him want to pull her into his arms and never let go. We staff the pumps on weekends when there's more business, oh, and holidays. Other than that, we're usually fine with just one person to cover both. Jared nodded and went back out to the small boat he was using. He hadn't been here long enough to notice the business at the store was heavier on weekends, but he had noticed there were a lot more people on the water this morning. 
He hadn't even registered it was Saturday until she said something. Guess that's what happens when you don't have a schedule to keep. Back at his cabin, he sat down with a legal pad to do some of the writing his therapist suggested. He had no idea where to start, and the idea of writing about the shooting and recovery again made him anxious. He glanced around the room wondering where to start that wouldn't be so bad, when he noticed the pile of wood next to the fireplace was almost gone. Guess that was one consequence of not using the heater. Outside he found a large neatly stacked wood pile but nothing split for burning. He'd never chopped wood but how hard could it be? He checked the tool shed and found a heavy thick axe and took it back to the wood pile. After a few false starts and minor mishaps, he figured out how to split the logs and got busy. Before long he was sweating, his shirt soaked and clinging to him. It pulled at odd moments distracting him, so he took it off and tossed it aside while he kept working. He'd split a good size pile and was considering taking a break to carry it up to the house, when movement to one side caught his attention. He stopped to look and found Ashley leaning against one side of the house, watching him. How long have you been there? A while. I thought you were going to call when you got off. I tried but there was no answer. So I stopped by. Then there was this really hot guy with no shirt on, and I was mesmerized. She pushed off the corner of the house where she'd been leaning, and made her way toward him. Jared checked the back pockets of his jeans, and realized he must have left his phone inside when he'd come out. The way the sweat dripped off hard, chiseled muscle took my breath away. She stepped off the porch and kept coming, batting her eyes as she continued. My heart fluttered every time you lifted that splitter, and I was too stunned to do anything to stop you. When she reached him, she stopped in front of him and slid her hands up his chest as she gazed up at him, a coy smile playing across her lips. You know just what to say to stir a man, don't you? Oh, I know how to stir you. Do you? Ashley reached for the hem of her shirt and in one smooth move lifted it over her head, leaving her standing in his driveway in her shorts and a thin, lacy bra. She was right. She knew how to move him. He stood blinking at her for several seconds, not believing she'd just taken off half her clothes in front of his cabin. Ashley wasn't letting the moment get away, she turned for the cabin and headed inside, stopping at the base of the stairs to look back over her shoulder. You coming? The hell he wasn't. With one last swing, he buried the splitter in the top of a log and followed her inside.